This is Friends Are Friends Forever, based on characters from Oblivious HD, and a little bit on Bethany Animates. This is chapter one, the beginning. It it all started one night a long, long time ago. Well, 14 years ago, to be exact. You see, I am the eldest unknown child of the famed last guest, or guest 1337. Maybe you've heard of him? Anyways, well, the great war between the Bacon Empire and the rest of Robloxia ended while I was still pretty young. I still have plenty of nightmares about myself before. My name is Isabella, or Issy for short. I am a half-guest, half-pure-blooded mix, and so is my younger twin brother, Shiro. Because we look more like guests than pure-blooded, we got kidnapped by the terrorists. I am 20 seconds older than Shiro, and both he and I are three years older than our little sister, Charlotte. Shiro and I loved each other very much, and even in the camp, we wouldn't leave each other's sides. One day, however... He disappeared into thin air. No execution happened. No one claimed to be seen with him. He was merely gone. I'd sit at the doors of the sleeping paddock and just wait as if one day he'd come back. What are you doing? Why aren't you asleep, Missy? The other guest asked me every night. Waiting for Bubba, I'd always say. He'll come back. I don't know why I believed that for as long as I did. I thought my whole life would be nothing but misery, pain, and blood field. But one fateful day, I would be free from these chains of torture. I started my day as usual, with no food, being worked to the bone, and getting whipped and beaten senselessly by the guards. I was seven years old, and I was working on chopping wood for whatever the selfish, bumbling losers needed it for. I wasn't even that strong, even for a seven-year-old, and I had always found a way for my pathetic self to be physically abused as if it was the medieval times. But one day, I heard from the Bacon General, months before Zeph, say, about the brat of guests 1337s. Executed immediately. There's no use for someone as pathetic as it is. Plus, if we kill it, the last guest should follow once his blood becomes boiled. Sweat flooded down my forehead as I felt fear consume my body. Some of the other guests heard the general's words as well, and they stopped everything that they were doing with shock in their bruised, scarred, and black eyes. I broke down in tears and started thinking about how painful death would be, and, worst of all, how heartbroken dad and mom would be. During my panic and meltdown, I heard a thundering, booming sound, followed by an intolerable pain that felt like my chest was being shredded from the inside. My vision became fuzzy as I looked down to see a gaping, crimson hole going straight to my heart. I fell to the ground and my breathing became sparse until finally everything went black. The last thing I thought I would ever hear was dump the body, make sure the police or guest six, not guest 66, guest 1337 never find it. That was the end for me, or so I thought. Call me M. Night Shyamalan. Because this story takes a few twists and turns. Of course I didn't die, but only because I had a savior. Chapter 2. The Savior. Told you this story would continue. After being shot pretty much dead, a guard placed me in a trash sack and left me on the side of a fielded road. The spot was deserted and about two hours away from the Empire, not to mention extremely secluded. So, yeah, it looks grim, I know, but 
Someone will come along, and that someone is my best friend. A feisty, egotistical, orange-haired, 18-year-old woman was walking with her dog, and she saved my life. Her name is Bethany, and her dog, Rex, and herself were walking down path. They were coming back from some sort of mission when Beth's eye was caught by the glistening black plastic of the trash sack. She stopped walking and bent down to the level of the sack. Based on what she told me, her eyes widened as soon as she saw the first glimpse of me. Beth pulled me out and examined the hole in my chest. Oh god, how do I do an impression of Beth? Hang on, kid. Hang on, she said. You'll get the help you need. Yeah, that's Beth for you. She may seem egotistical, reckless, competitive, and short-tempered on the surface. And she is, but she cares about people deeply. Beth took me to her small rundown cabin that she lived in with Rex. I don't know how she healed me, but at least she did. I probably stayed unconscious for about a week or two, but it was different than I thought it would be. It was like being asleep, but I couldn't hear, speak, or feel. When I did wake up, however, memories flooded my mind and vision, and no happy memories I had ever had either. It seemed... It seems like every memory was of my suffering, the general's attempt to murder me, and all my endless pain. I was looking around frantically and then saw Beth towards my side from the other sofa that she was walked towards my side from the other sofa that she was watching on. Hi, kid, she began. What's your name? What happened? Where did you come from? I was still on edge and very jumpy, and I'm willing to trust anyone. Frightened, I attempted to run away from her, but was stopped when I put weight on my foot, which was all kinds of bruised and lacerated, and I yelled out in pain as I fell onto the sofa again. My feet, legs, torso, hands, and arms were all covered in bandages, but I believed it was normal and didn't need bandages. For most of my life, I have known nothing but but torture and bloodshed. The lacerations, bruises, scrapes, and endless pain were what I thought was part of a normal person's life. I knew it sounds sad. I know it sounds sad, but that's what I had grown to believe. Beth looked at me with even more concern than she had ever felt before as she put her hand out to shake mine. I trembled up and put my arms up as if I was trying to block a guard's blow. Are you going to hurt me? I whimpered. What? Jeez, kid, no! Beth said, almost in a shocked yell. I looked down, thinking I had made her angry. I didn't know what to say. I hadn't talked to anyone other than distressed, glum, and even suicidal guests. And even then, I had never had a real conversation that wasn't full of me stumbling with my words or both of us bursting into tears. Beth and Rex stared at each other, not knowing what to do with me. I'm sorry. Did I say something wrong? I implored. I could tell that Beth was concerned for my safety, yet I didn't think she cared that much about it at the time. She walked off for a moment, but then came back with a baby blue short sleeve shirt and a medium length snow white skirt. They were about my size, and Beth gestured for me to take the clothes, saying, Here, take these and put them on. Your clothes are streaked in blood and dirt, and don't look the least bit comfortable. I took the shirt and skirt, heading into the corner that was hidden by a big bookshelf in the living room. Raising the shirt above my head, I was in the middle of putting it on 
when I felt something tug at my pant leg. Hey! A voice that sounded like a young boy muttered loudly. You know that's supposed to go the other way, right? I glanced down and saw a dog with fiery red eyes with a golden sclera, an orange tan f- coat of fur, yellowish blonde ears, a peach color tuft at the top of his head with a darker peach tip to it, and a shiny black nose. Yes, it could talk. I know it's weird. It freaked me out first, too. Anyway, I looked at what I was doing and saw that I was putting my head through the head hole and not the one that covers your stomach. I know, I mumbled as I fixed the shirt. I finished getting dressed and hobbled before I hobbled to where Beth was in the living room. When she saw me, Beth patted the spot onto the sofa where she motioned for me to sit down at. I was leaning on everything that was in sight as my feet felt like they were being crushed by a sledgehammer every time I put weight onto them. I tried to push myself towards the sofa one more time before I fell on the floor, shouting in pain. I felt like I was still trapped as the pain stood out from anything that was right there in front of me. Kid! Beth exclaimed as she jumped off the sofa and paced towards me. Hey, are you okay? I started sobbing due to the discomfort of my situation. I had been far away from my home and family for three years, wasting away and being tortured for three years, and almost killed for Pete's sake. Suddenly, Beth appeared and just so happened to be kind of me, but I didn't know I could trust her. Rex, stay with her. Beth instructed as the dog that was introduced as Rex sat down by my side. A few minutes later, Beth came back into the living room with a wheelchair that looked like something out of the Victorian area. It was mildly tall with cedar wheels and a weak-colored woven seat in back. Beth picked me up and placed me on the sofa next to her. I had never seen a wheelchair like that before, so I was moderately curious about what the contraption was. I tugged on the sleeve of Beth's beige sweater, and while pointing to the wheelchair, I asked, What is that? It's a wheelchair, she explained. While your legs and feet are healing, you will use this to get around until we can move on to crutches or a walker. I had remembered the day my little sister was born. Shiro and I had gotten hungry, so our godfather, Matt gave us some money to spend on the vending machine in the hall near the waiting room. I, in that hospital, a mother was in a wheelchair cradling her newborn. Her husband pushed her, and the family followed behind. Like at the hospital? I questioned in my raspy voice. Beth nodded and rolled the wheelchair for me. I scooted to the edges of it, and Beth helped me get onto the wheelchair. She bumped, I mean, not that. She told me that I had to move the wheels to get around, so I, I did, and bumped into a f- few things at first. But, ben- but eventually, I got the hang of it by the end of the night. When it was time for bed, Beth took me upstairs to a small loft that had a stained glass window and a little window seat right by it. When I was settled in what was my bed, I felt like I was back home. The, it was an old mattress, but it felt like a cloud to me who hardly got to sleep ever. And even when I did, the mattresses felt hard as stone. I brought a nightgown for you, said, Beth said, coming back upstairs. I had already fallen asleep with Rex sleeping on the floor beside me. I had a smile on my face for the first time in three years. I was glad to have Beth, Bethany to help me. I would get home someday, but for the moment, having Beth and Rex would be all I needed.